Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. Well, I've ventured out into the greenhouse because it's absolutely throwing it down, or it was a minute ago, and it has been all morning. So where else should I come other than the greenhouse? Best place to be. Now, it's all happening at the moment in here. So tons of interesting things going on. We're changing the warmer side to an intermediate. More on that later. We've got new plants, new growths, new blooms. We've got self-watering experiments going on because I'm going away in a few weeks and I don't want to impose on anybody We've got several experiments going on just tons of things going on and frankly i'm a little bit up to here with it but it's all good fun so let's jump in and we are in so if you're not guessed already it's going to be one of those vlog style videos bit of a relaxed one just have a quick look round see what kind of things are happening and what changes are going on and maybe you might find some of them useful some of them interesting some of them just plain beautiful to look at so we're going to start off over here in the warm which is soon to be an intermediate side why intermediate? Well, I am looking at reducing some costs. Also looking around at some of these things that I've got in here, some of these plants, I'm thinking I can get away with lower temperatures. Obviously at this time of year, me changing the temperature down to like 15 stroke 16 Celsius is not going to make much difference because it tends to be warm on that anyway. I mean, at the moment it's 23 in here and it has rained all morning. Um, but, you know, we're in the middle of August. Obviously, that's going to change pretty rapidly once September, October comes. So I am just looking at ways of reducing some of these costs as time goes on. And I think rather than completely drop it all down to 12, so the whole greenhouse is the same, I thought I'd try intermediate, see what we can get away with, see what plants will survive. See, I don't really want to lose these begonias. And I know a lot of these begonias will survive lower temperatures, but tends to be for a short length of time, not really for a, a, like a duration of our winter. So anyway, we'll see what's happening. So I just thought I'd show you this thing. So this is my staghorn fern, and it's growing these two great big, I don't know what you call them, like plates at the bottom. It did have one when it came, but it, it, it completely rotted off and died off. Um, so this is putting quite a lot of growth on now. It's quite good actually because this pot has its own little reservoir underneath so I don't have to worry too much about keeping that too wet. They're nice. I, I, I did look them up. I did find out what they were all about. Um, but it's nice to see them growing. So also we've got uh, the lovely Trediscantia Zabrina. So this pot here... It has been restarted a few times. I do eventually lose some of the leaves on there. And if you saw one of my videos recently, you'll have seen that I've got like a huge Tredescantia Zabrina growing in a bag. More on that later if you've not seen the video. So my Tolumnias are coming on pretty well. Um, relaxing a little bit over these now because they are putting on new growth. So hopefully uh, we will get some blooms on those this year although maybe we won't if we get intermediate temperatures now the manzavilla you know i had problems with that earlier in the year and you can see that's doing great guns now absolutely looking at its stunning best and uh, i still would like some of the colors i lost one of them that was like a pinky creamy color now i am trying my absolute best to move over to some kind of semi self-watering method and i'm going to do a video all about this and just showing you the various methods i've used and the various experiments i'm trying and you can see here so i've got ro water in here and i've got some capillary matting in here with um, these nepenthes sitting in there they've only been in there a few days i don't know how they're going to manage i think Nepenthes are generally okay because they don't mind being wet all the time. It's when the plants don't want to be wet all the time or they don't want to sit in water. Now, whether it makes a difference, whether it's capillary matting and it's only wet, like a tiny little bit at the bottom, it's not like you know a full couple of centimetres of water that they're sitting in. Who knows? We, we will see. I'm sure people have done this kind of thing before. But uh, like I say, it's 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 a big change for the amount of plants that I've got in the greenhouse. I'm not talking about orchids here. I'm talking about all the ones with like multi-purpose type composts that dry out very quickly. New growth on my psilogyny. I did try soaking this to see whether these bulbs, pseudobulbs, would plump up, but they didn't. Um, they didn't do anything. They just stayed as they were. But it has got a lot of new growth on it. So I'm endeavouring to try and keep that wetter. I'll 
try and keep it more moist so again this is looking fabulous again i can't seem to do any wrong with that one so i'll just leave that one down there um, i cut back this with that gorgeous calaria so i've cut that back now look at this just as a curiosity can you see those they look like little caterpillars this is the rhizome can you see how it grows it kind of comes out of the ground there or comes out of the soil and then jumps along and puts itself down again a really strange thing i've never seen that happen before calaria rhizomes very very interesting thing so down here we've got a few other things plumeria doing really well at the moment i've just moved those over so that they are now sitting in uh, a little bit of a damp capillary mat down there but what i can do and this is something that i've been looking into and looking at some of the others that i've been doing um, the reservoirs back there i have got a pot in there but that pot which has i don't know if you can see that it has um, a phalaenopsis in it it just seemed to go really well though in fact that's there it is <laughs> that's the foul um, it, it just fits nicely there because it's got this great big long flower spike so i put it in a, a blue pot which has no holes in it so that's fine that can sit in that water it's not actually touching the fowl but i can let that go dry that was my point the reservoir of water i can let go dry so i can let these things dry out and it should be easier for me to water some new tradescantia down there i can't remember what that's called i think i threw away the label silly me i best uh, best dig that out I, they only came yesterday so i've not had a chance to do anything with them so i've just stuck them in some water just for the time being another couple of new plants here uh, smar sent me these from semi hydro with smar or semi hydroponics with smar what's that one synjonium panda synjonium panda and that one is philodendron camp oh, crikey campos portoanum wow so gorgeous new leaves um <clears throat> very kind of her to send those over so what else have we got over here we've lost a few african violets because i've put them in the conservatory and i don't know i'm feeling a bit like i don't know if african violets going to be my thing i don't know i don't know whether they're just not showy enough i mean it's one of these things you don't really i don't really know what it is that attracts me to certain plants um i'm wondering whether again i've got some nice new babies up here whether these might be a little bit more interesting for me i'm not really sure okay so begonia luxuriant so it's one of those plants that flops and wilts almost immediately it gets dry especially at this time of year and it's pretty dramatic it flops right over it can recover pretty quickly but i don't want it to get really stressed and if i'm away which i am in a few weeks i don't want it to die off while i'm away because it does absolutely look stunning really really tropical looking but what i'm finding is even though it's in the capillary matting it's still pretty dry all the others are getting nice and damp which shows that they're in contact with the matting and they are getting that capillary action so it could actually be that the bottom of that pot there is some drainage there so it could be that the media isn't in contact with the capillary matting so that's something that i'm going to have to check so this thing obviously isn't just a set and forget you've got to keep checking these things and testing and making sure that it is actually working so i think i've shown you this several times so this caloria absolutely beautiful another lovely begonia there another one there uh, some african violets orchids there all going okay nothing really spectacular happening with them at the moment but they are growing and i expect them to put out some spikes soon and we've got lelia anceps that's going to bloom hopefully that'll get rather a lot a lot longer than what it is at the moment we have over here begonia silver lace so there's loads of gaps over here now because of the way i've been changing and moving things around some more orchids i did actually get this one to come back again so this is the habinaria medusa i'm hoping that gives me a spike at some point and we've got loads and loads of growth on the nepenthes rebecca sopa i can't seem to stop it not that i want it to producing beautiful pictures it's a shame they all kind of point towards where the most of the light is i.e away from me but they are absolutely gorgeous and i'm going to have to think of a way 
to self-water these. I've got a few ideas, so if anybody's got any ideas on that, put it in the comments. But my, what's in my mind at the moment is some kind of reservoir either slightly underneath it, which would mean hanging something, or remove them from the hanging position though, which I don't really want to, but I'm gonna to have to do, and somehow suspend them close to some kind of reservoir and try and push like a strip of capillary matting through the pot and then into the reservoir. That's what's going through my mind at the moment. So I'm gonna to have to have a, have a go at that at some point. I'm trying to do this as other things are happening in the greenhouse, as well as filming, as well as looking after everything, as well as working as well. But I'm not complaining. I'd rather be doing things than not, at least I'm able to. So we've got Begonia Silver Lace there. We've got uh, Tridescantia Purpurea scrambling around the corner. Bit of a Tridescantia movement going on over here. We've got the Red Jewel. We've got the Mains Blush. We've got the Purpurea. We've got this one isn't actually Triscantia, but it's Comeli Comelinaceae. I almost had to stumble over that one. It's still the Comelinaceae family. It's a new one, and it's Gibassis Jose Puig Puig. Another one, Calicia Rosato. So these are Comelinaceae, they're not Tridescantia. This one is. This is Tridescantia fluminensis yellow hill. I do have a tendency to revert, so I'll have to keep my eye on that one, but I really like that one. Uh, another begonia there, another begonia there, another begonia there, great big one, griffon in the corner. I've got that one in, on some capillary matting and that's the reservoir. But what you can do with these things, of course, is you can let the reservoir dry out so that it's not constantly wet and not sitting in the water all the time. Um, I could, of course, also remove the strip if I thought that it needed a little break. So more like a trying to scan to your nursery so we've got fluminensis blushing bride we've got uh, fluminensis albo vitata all new ones we've got the triscantia uh, zebrina quadricolor all these were one little cutting and they're now more because obviously as they grow i take them out and pop them back in the pot really like this one this is tiana it does have another name Clicia gentlii elegans i think it is that's looking particularly nice. And what else have we got going on in the corner? We've got the Neo Stylist Lucinaria. That's the most flowers it's had on it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Smells absolutely wonderful. So let's move on a little more into the cooler side, which is exactly the same at this time of year. So we've got the asparagus fern at the top there. I try and keep that pretty small. I don't want it to go too big. Uh, my Gloriosa Lily is almost as tall as me now. I'm hoping that gives me some bloom soon, otherwise that's going to be chucked. Um, we have <coughs> some capillary matting here for these lovely Nepenthes, different Nepenthes. This is a nice one, really nice. There we go, really nice pictures there. I'm just hoping, because there's a lot of drips coming out of that one. I can see it's quite a lot in that corner. I think I'll move that over there a bit. I don't want them to be absolutely sopping wet, but yet obviously they can't dry out. Nepenthes and dryness don't go together. I've got my uh, one of my Mastavalias there. This is Mastavalia ignea, and I did have to change the bottom of the pot so that the crock at the bottom, I removed that and put some moss there instead so that it does raise up through the plants and you get that capillary action. But it doesn't want to be sitting in water all the time. So I can either, well, you can actually see, so this feeds that which feeds that. So this, I've let this run dry because the cephalotis don't want to be sitting in water constantly. So I'll leave that dry for a couple of days. That will then dry out, that will dry out. Uh, that comes from another one over there. It's, it's a juggling act. Um, I'm new to this, so we'll see how it goes. It's just a bit of an experiment before I actually go away. All the streptocarpus are back now. They did all kind of suffer when we had the really hot weather for a week, but they soon pop back up with loads and loads of blooms. So you can see loads of blooms going on there. Even the little Saxorum has come back with three or four blooms. Um, we've got a lovely bloom on a Tredescantia, the hurry one, the Salamontana there in the corner. There's a maiden's blush over there, another red jewel there, and um, some more streptocarpus. And what's well, a new bloom on the, what's this one? It's not silver lace, silver gem, little gem, I can't remember. Silver jewel, I've got one word right. And then we have some 
gorgeous Dracera over here, some sun juice. So again, these have got the capillary matting treatment, all sparkly over there. A couple of pinguiculars with some nice blooms on them. And then again, loads of Dracera, different Dracera over there. And my Dracera Regia, the King Sun Dew, which is actually the smallest one at the moment. I took it out of the crusty, high salt content coir because I think that's what the, the rest of them all died off. They, they did germinate, but they died off. And we said we knew what that was because I didn't actually wash the coir because I wanted to, we had to at the time. So I've put it in some new sphagnum. It's still there. They're, they're like painfully slow growing, but maybe now that it's not in salt, it might start to move a little bit more quickly. I've got some new streps here, but obviously they're not blooming just yet. That's a new one. DS Caramel, I think that's from last year, DS Caramel. Um, that's DS1126. There are some new ones there. That's still looking, that's one of the older ones. That's looking absolutely gorgeous. Polka dot purple. Uh, that looks like that's got a few going over there. I need to pull that off. Uh, some lovely ferns going on. Um, this Quadriorita. Um, I've now got that on some capillary matting. Already you can see some new fronds coming on that. So that will be looking nice and bronzy soon. Uh, we've got some new buds, new blooms on the Sologeny speciosa, looking really nice. And then moving along, in fact, all the ferns have got new fronds on them. Again, not surprisingly, as soon as that sun goes down, then the growth starts to come again. Of course, they do like the sun, they like the brightness, but they don't like it when it's getting up to 35, 36 behind this glass. So I've got it as shaded as possible, but any more shade and it'll be dark. This Nepenthes, so... It, Again it's, again, it's struggled a little bit in the sun and it produced like a deformed picture. So I'm going to cut that off. Um, again, I expect that to come back now that the, the real heat of the sun has gone. Uh, you wouldn't believe this one had no pictures on it whatsoever a couple of months back because I let it dry out and they all fell off. And well, now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, four, six, seven pictures on there. That's made a remarkable recovery. So we have loads of streptocarpus, some pelagoniums, pelagonium, uh, pelagonium SK verglo. We've got Encyclia radiata, really smells very, very nice. We've got a shari baby over there with a couple of spikes, if you can see those. We've got a Dracula chimera down there. Uh, most of them, I did have about seven blooms on it at one point, most of them have gone over just... Um, it's a shame I had to hide it away because of the sun and it was just getting too hot. Um, I have got a maxillaria which is about to bloom just in that corner there. Unfortunately, I'll probably miss that one. I bet it blooms when I'm away. Uh, we've got a renanthera looking very nice there. Elcidium twinkle did recover eventually. We have, I should have scanned here, Nanook. We had... If you remember this one, I did a video on this one a couple of weeks ago, and it does seem to have recovered. It's put a lot more growth on. I'm still getting the brown spots, and I'm convinced it's humidity. Um, I've got it in line of the fan, but I still think, I mean, the fan's not on 24 hours a day. I still think that's the cause. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a cutting of it, and I'm going to put it in the house. I'm trying to keep all the variables the same, other than humidity, and see if that makes a difference I guess we'll know by trying it. That's my theory. I'm going to give it a go. I like trying these different things. So we have some more species, pelagoniums. I don't know what you think about these. Do you like these kind of things? I like them, but they, they are like messy. Like messy in as much as the blooms soon fall off. Uh, they, they bloom successionally, but it, the bloom spike just gets longer and longer. So you have a bloom on the end of it and then it can grow a bit longer and you get another bloom on the end of it. And they just kind of look pretty messy. This Stella Pelagonium looking beautiful. That's uh, come back into bloom since the sun went down. Uh, what have we got here? Some Dendrobium Cuthbertsonii hybrids. And finally, after two years, the cuttings I took of my Mandevilla finally begun to vine. And this beautiful Bougainvillea. And if you think that you can't grow Bougainvillea in the UK, well, look at this. However... 
don't think it's all easy going because it certainly isn't this is a pain in the backside and it, if you just look down at the leaves it constantly looks like it's wilting or it's not happy and the blooms fall off and the leaves fall off and almost the minute that that dries out it seems to want watering again and if you give it too much water it will it looks like it's wilting so i really don't know i've tried all sorts with it so i'm still experimenting it is blooming but i wouldn't say it's thriving um, we've got a few kind of searching shoots but it's this leaf drop that that's really irritating me because obviously there is something causing the leaf drop and i'm really not sure what it is i'm almost 100 percent certain 99.9 percent .9 certain it doesn't have a pest there's nothing in the pot we've gone through all that before we'll just have to see if i can maybe even if i try uh something like the capillary matting thing with that that might work i don't know we'll see so what else have we got another begonia fuchsioides we've got all those little babies down there have all begun to bloom as well i'm going to get rid of all those because i would rather have say three different hybrids than have three of the same one it's one of those things that you it's you like hands on it to throw it away and then something pulls you back i all think oh, i'll swap it with somebody i'll give it away and then i never do i just never get round to it um, so we've got some beautiful streptocarpus, beautiful pelagoniums, another sherry baby there. See what I mean about this? See, this is another one, uh, another one of those pelagoniums. Beautiful blooms, but you can see that's finished now, but we'll end up with another shoot will come and it'll elongate even more. I mean, look at this one. Great big long spike. So it's they're just not, uh, they're not polite, <laughs> should we say. Um, okay, Phragmopedium. We've got Epidendrum, what else have we got over there? Um, another little fern down here, this one got scale insects, chopped it right back and that got rid of the scale insects. I got to the point actually I thought well, I'm sick of this, I'm just going to chop it right back and if it lives, great, if it doesn't, well I'm not lost, at least I've not got any scale insects. So, okay, question of the day. If you grow house plants, carnivorous plants, begonias, orchids, tridescantia, streptocarpus, have I said streptocarpus? Whatever it is you grow, or if there's a complete other family of plants that you grow, if it's a tropical one, or if it grows in somewhere warm, I don't want anything that can survive a frost. I don't know why, that's just my, you know, the channel's called tropical plants, what can I say? So, if there's anything that you think I don't have, or a particular species or hybrid that fits in with any of those that I've mentioned, then please write it in the comments down below. I love to hear from people. Give me a thumbs up, please, if you think you enjoyed this and if you think it gave you some kind of value or some kind of entertainment or you just enjoyed having a little chat as we looked around the greenhouse. So for now, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.